So I'm uh, Phil Lovretsky here. I'm a professor at the University of Texas El Paso and obviously I'm also a duck hunter. We're out here in uh, Caballo, New Mexico, uh, trying to put some birds on the water so that way we can sample them for uh, duck DNA. Hey Ellie, uh, you want to get try to get this bird? Sure. Good job. What is it? Don't know. A spoon? It's a spoonie. Spooner. Here's a. Beautiful green wing teal, going to be part of the duck DNA project, building the reference set for green wing teal here. What do we get so far? A couple northern shovelers, a uh, male here, not in full plume, and a female, and then uh, one nice widgeon. All right, so this was the end of uh, the first day. It was just a kind of afternoon, see what kind of happens. Uh, didn't expect much, it was like 79 degrees. Uh, no wind, as you can see, completely dead calm, blue bluebird kind of day, and uh, thankfully at the end there we got a few volleys. I was able to capitalize uh, four out of five, I will say, four out of six. Only missed one. Gadwell should have had it. But i um, pretty happy that we got four birds, four birds that, for our new collaboration with Ducks Unlimited for Duck DNA. Building that data set, critically important for uh, future waterfowl conservation, so pretty happy about that, and we've got another couple days, uh, so let's see what happens. are out here on day two. I'm Andrew Limmer, Regional Director for Ducks Unlimited in New Mexico and Arizona. We are chasing ducks in southern New Mexico this morning out on some mud flats and trying to see what will happen here this morning. We are looking at harvesting some ducks for the duck DNA research program that will be going on. We've got some mallards and Mexican ducks that we've seen in the area uh, that we will hopefully get some samples turned into fill for. I got one. It just died way out there. Oh boy. Good dog. Juvie snow. It's pitiful. So we're just getting back uh, after our second morning of hunting, a little bit uh, slower this morning. Uh, we're gonna blame Dr. Phil for that one. He sent us into a mud pit. Uh, came out of there with one snow goose, but ducks weren't flying, so we did some scouting, and uh, we think we've got a good one lined up for tomorrow. So we, we'll chalk it up as a scouting day for day two and looking forward to a good hunt uh, tomorrow morning. Morning of day three, uh, we're back here in Caballo in New Mexico trying to get a few ducks. Uh, morning's been pretty successful, a little slow still. You can see it's pretty calm, blue skies again, but uh, hopefully a few more birds will uh, fly in. Cool. Hey, 
I knew they were mallards. Oh, Mexican oh. I knew it. I heard. I got him. <laughs> I said it Oh, the pressure was on on that one, too. <laughs> Good work. Good boy. Oof, piled up. All right, we're here, uh, just finished up in New Mexico on day three. You can see we had a really good morning shoot after we were invited back to Phil's honey hole versus where we were sent yesterday. <laughs> but uh, really fun shoot. Most importantly, we are able to harvest a Mexican duck, possibly hybrid mallard, uh, that we'll be able to send in for the DNA testing. Three of these guys came in, uh, what turned out to be about uh, Mexican ducks, or in my, in my uh, professional opinion, probably a Mexican mallard hybrid, a true hybrid. So we're about to um, use this to showcase duck DNA, how e easy it is in the field, some of the things that I do to make sure that we get good sampling and good DNA off of these guys. I've got my hunt hunting bag right here. I just sort of put in my duck DNA kit. And one thing that I have is a Sharpie that I, I, I carry with me when you open it up. You're gonna see a QR code uh, that takes you to the Duck DNA uh, website. We've got uh, some additional information. Uh, we've got our five vials that come with the kit, some postage and other things that go back, uh, your uh, Duck DNA sticker, some parafilm to close up your uh, vials once you've got the tongue in there. The one thing that I, I have here is some scissors, but you could use your knife, you could use pretty much anything. Uh, if you've got more than one duck uh, between the ducks, please use the provided alcohol wipes, so that way uh, you, you clean that surface off so we're not cross-contaminating between uh, vials. And so one thing that I also have here is that I used the little insert and I sort of just marked out the five vials there and I've got some information so that way I don't forget it when I when I go to submit if I don't do it in the field if I don't have cell service or anything like that uh, so that way I can know that uh, my vials are you know 486 through 490 for each one we've got information like species sex age date and location if you you fill it out as best as you can because these are some of the things that we're going to be asking you to uh, upload on the on the duck DNA website so today we're gonna to do DD486. We've got 486 right here. So the species here, we're, you know, if you don't know anything about it, I would say, you'd, you would say, oh, it's a Mexican duck. Given that I've looked at these guys for a long time, uh, I can see that it's likely an adult. And what my lab has shown is that the adult, if it's an adult with all these kind of mallard traits, you can see the nice curl, the green in the head, the uh, uh, chestnut there, we got a lot of kind of speckling on the body. That really screams hybrid, a real Mexican duck mallard hybrid. Under species, you're gonna put Mexican duck for me. So Mexican duck, it's a male. You can see that nice bright bill. I already went through kind of my aging schematic. And again, if you can't age it, don't worry about it at all. But it's gonna be an AHY or an adult. And then again, the location, Caballo, New Mexico. All right, so we are, hey, what's up? <laughs> Chief. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, sample this guy. We're gonna take our first vial right here, make sure it's 486, 486, and then we get, we kind of put together this nice little handy spot for you to put your vial. Go ahead and kind of open the vial, set it all down in a spot, so that way you can cut the tongue and put it directly in. So we're gonna go ahead and open this guy up. Kind of set that aside. We're gonna take our brand new clean uh, scissors. I'm gonna open up, oh, got a little rigor mortis. So we're just gonna open up the mouth there. We're gonna take, again, sort of a quarter inch to half inch slice. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and place that tongue in there. 
You're gonna go ahead and close that vial up. Give it a nice shake and mix. Make sure that kind of tongue gets into the buffer so you can see right there. Nice, everything, the tongue is completely in solution so that way the solution starts to work. It kind of stops the DNA from all deg from becoming degraded and, and so forth. And uh, So then what you would want to do, take one of these uh, parafilms that we gave you, sort of open it up like so, and then just go right around. Kind of make a nice little casing. Now we're in the field just like you are, so this bad boy is going to get into the freezer once I get home. And then I would say just put it in a Ziploc, and once you've got all five ready, you can put it back into your uh, duck DNA kit here, close it up, send it over to us, and we'll start uh, analyzing your ducks. All right, so when you get onto the application on your phone, or if you're gonna do this on uh, uh, at home on your computer, you'll uh, log into your duck DNA uh, portal. Go ahead and go to new sample. You're gonna be asked a few different questions. Go ahead and choose your location. Those lat longs will only be used for research purposes, will not be provided in any sort of public or private repositories. We're just gonna use it for research. All right, so go ahead and allow it. You go to the next step. You go harvest date today. Go ahead and select the habitat that you hunted. Find the one that is nearest. For us, it was freshwater marsh. Go ahead and to the next step. Again, duck information. Ours was an adult uh, and it was a male. If you're not sure, go ahead and say, that, say so. And then duck species, if you're unsure, go ahead and say unsure. Ours, again, uh, as I noted, I believe is a mallard Mexican duck hybrid. And if you think it's a hybrid, you have a choice to go ahead and choose more than two, more than one uh, uh, species. So you would choose if it's a hybrid. In this case, you would choose mallard, and then you'd find Mexican duck. Choose both of those. Go to the next step, and then sa the sample ID is the the vial ID that you have. Ours was DD or duck DNA zero zero four eight six. And then you've got some uh, uh, questions of, of duck photos. We're gonna be doing that afterwards just because of the space and limitations to get those photos up right now. So we're just gonna go ahead into the next step. Then you're gonna have all the information that you've provided. If that all looks good, you go ahead and say submit. It's submitting and voila, your sample has been submitted. And soon that sample, once you're all done with the season or collected all five and send that to our lab here at the University of Texas El Paso, the Lavretsky lab, we're gonna go ahead and analyze that and you're gonna find out exactly what you harvested this season.